Hey everyone, this is a tutorial on using decision items on the NetBeans Java Learning Palette. Uh, there's only four items, if, else, if, else, and switch statements, and they're all pretty intuitive to use. <coughs> so, to use any of these items, you just drag them from the palette to where you want them in the code, and then you'll see a dialog window. For the if statement, there's only two items, the comment and the condition of the if statement. So if you just put this in the comment, and then for the condition, say you just want to check to see if 12 is less than 20. You hit OK, and it will build that. And you can put whatever you want inside here. So now, in just two seconds of using the palette, we have a program that checks to see 12 is less than 20 and prints out Hello World. And that should run, I hope. Yeah. So we print out Hello World because 12 is always less than 20. So if statements aren't that useful in most code unless you're dealing with variables. So say we put int x equals 10 and int y equals 20. If we save our code, then the, the decision items become a lot more useful for the palette. So now if I drag this in here, put a comment, and say I don't know how, if you don't know how to put the syntax directly in, if you're very new to Java, I added the add expression button which will allow you to build an expression and it will paste it right here and then when you hit OK it will paste it into your if statement. So when you hit add expression you get three combo boxes that show up and this is for your first term, your comparator, and your second term. So say I wanted to put my first term as the constant 12. You could but that's not really useful. If you hit the drop down menu it will give you a list of all the variables that are in your code. In this case, it's x and y. So if I choose x and I choose the comparator, all the things you generally want are under the equality and relational tab. This is equal, less than, greater, not equal, and all permutations thereof. So say we put equals 10. We know x is 10 because we put it at that, but just for our purposes, we're going to check to see if x is equal to 10. So now when we generate this code, we hit OK. It generates an if statement to check to see if x is equal to 10. And then from there, you can put whatever you want. Then if you run it, it should work because we know it's true. Yep, and it works just fine. If you want to add more complex comparisons, more complex conditions. Uh, I added the functionality so that you can build complex expressions in this window, the inside the conditional window. That's why it's so big. You can make it as complicated as you want. So I'll add another comment. So you want to add the expression if x is less than 20. So we want this if statement to only run if x is less than 20 and y is greater than 10. So if we hit the and button, it will add just two ampersand, uh, is, are those ampersands? I think so. Uh, the syntax for the and statement. And you add another expression. So put y, you choose the greater than comparator, and then you just put 10 for the second term. You can also put variables for the second term but we're not doing that right now. So you hit OK, it builds that second condition and it builds it in a way that it's relevant to the rest of the stuff around it. And you can do that as much as you want. You can also put or statements, but we'll just put the two for now. So we hit OK, it builds the full condition and you put the syntax in for whatever you want. run it, it should be fine. Okay. 
So, <clears throat> the ELSIF button is essentially the exact same. Drag it in, put a comment, and then you can build expressions. We're going to put else if x equals y. Hit OK, hit OK, and it builds it the same way. It puts a comment at the last bracket. And then the else item is a little bit different because there's no condition for an else statement. So it's just a comment and a body. So this is an else statement. And if none of the conditions are met, we'll just print oops. Hit OK, and it builds it, and it puts the comment at the end. I know a lot of people like putting else ifs and else's uh, on this same line that the comment is on in this case, but I like having the comments here instead because it's a lot more clean and you can see which each condition does. So so now we've got this whole uh, it's essentially one statement, but they all work together and it's very neat and intuitive to use. So if we can manipulate this to make sure it all works, we know the first one works and they're true right now, so it prints its work. Then if we make y10, which makes this first statement false, it'll check to see if this is true. It should be true, so it should print their equal. And if it's neither, uh, so we'll make this one, it should print the else statement, which is oops. Excellent. So those are the first three items, which all pretty much work together, if, else, if, and else. The one that's a little bit of a black sheep is the switch statement, which is a little bit confusing to people at first, but it's actually very, very simple. So say we have a variable, and we want to check to see if it's within a range of numbers. Uh, add our comment as always, we're going to choose y. So if we want to check to see if y is 0 to 10, or 0 to 5 even, just for simplicity's sake, and do something different for every value, then uh, we just simply put choose y, that's what we're going to be checking, five cases, that's going to give us 0 to 4, and then it will give us a default case for if it's none of those cases. So you hit OK, it generates the switch statement. So it gives you case 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and default. So we'll just add conditions for all of these. I'm just going to do this really quick. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to check y. If it's 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, or none of those, it's going to execute the relative line of code. So in this case, y is 1, so it should execute case 1, which prints out the word 1. Excellent. So if we change y to 4, it should execute case 4. And it does. If it's 5, then it doesn't match any of the cases, so it should run the default case. And it does. So all of these items work, and they're pretty intuitive to use. And that's pretty much it for the decision tutorial on the Java Learning Palette.